Yes, thank you. Praise the Lord. And just be praying for this broadcast. And listen, I want to invite you. Join me. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube, okay? Benlin Global. Subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, we love your support. We love your, uh, you know, subscription. Uh, thanks for just, you know, being friends. All right? Amen? Listen, uh, of course, I said I typed in uh, the title incorrectly. But today, I want to start off with the posture of the prophet, okay, with the posture of the prophet, and I, I want to share a, a little bit of my journey first, and then we're going to go into some word in scripture, okay, give us some hearts, give us some likes, and do share, 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 today I want to talk about the posture of the prophet, everyone say the posture of the prophet, okay, um, you know, listen, there are false prophets, and there are true prophets, okay, there are real prophets, and there are prophets that have gone off the deep end, and um, today I want to talk about the posture of the prophet because your heart posture is everything. Amen. Your heart posture is everything. And uh, I want to share a little bit of my journey because literally when I was born again with YWAM Youth with the Mission years ago, uh, we had something called hearing the voice of God. And really your greatest asset is the ability to hear and discern God's voice. I hope if you're taking notes, write that down. The most important thing for us, you and I, why are we here on earth? Why are we born again? Why are we believers? For intimacy, for connection, for fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And and pretty much when we started in Y1 with our DTS or Deception Training School, uh, one of the main things that we learned was to hear the voice of God. Now, it's such a sad thing that so many people are confused and they think they hear the voice of God. People are bipolar, schizo, shakara. You know, people are are all around. You know, they're 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 hearing different voices rather than the voice, rather than His voice. They're they're scatterbrained. They're all over the place rather than having clarity and really understanding with accuracy and just the realness and. You know, is it God? Is it not? Is it me? Is it is it the devil? Is it my flesh? Is it my pizza that I had last night? Oosh, God. Uh, you know, is, is it is it God or is it me? And, you know, so many people, they start off and, you know, they'll even ask me and say, how do I know if it's God or is it me? How do I know if it's God or is it me? And I'm going to give you some keys um, in a moment that I've come to understand. How do I know if I'm hearing? The voice of God. Oosh, how do I know that this is God and not me? And, and you know, literally, I've been in a journey. And again, I'm sharing my introduction right now, really to the whole series, not just to day one today, of the posture of the prophetic, the posture of the prophet. Ooh, I'm getting hit with the Holy Ghost. Pray with me, y'all, that I'll be able to finish because I could already feel the heart of God. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You know, there's people uh, that, again, they start off in purity. But they begin to go off on a deep end because of pride, because of money, because of fame. The praise of the man. They become proud. So they think they're untouchable. They think they're above accountability, above man and woman. So, you know, people begin to use and usurp the power. And they begin to give glory to themselves. And they love the praise of the man rather than the praises of God. Uh, but anyways, I, I, as I started in, in, in the prophetic, really, I just wanted to know God. Someone say, know God. I, I didn't even want to be prophetic, okay? I just wanted to know God. I just wanted to feel God, see God, hear God, understand God, like... The song from Hillsong, break my heart for what breaks yours, everything I have, uh, break my heart for what breaks yours. And, you know, I just wanted to see him and hear him and experience him. I wanted to have a greater, deeper, more genuine relationship with the Lord. And, um, you know, so I just began growing in my art, some say art, in the art and the ability to hear God, okay? Now, now there is a science to hearing God, but there's also an art. Like, uh, like, there's an, like there's principles for your breakthrough, 
but there's also the unique dance of experiencing a breakthrough. And here's the thing. Too many people stay stuck on the 21 steps or stay stuck on the five steps rather than really being in the spirit, which goes beyond the structures and the systems. I love what one of my mentors, Tony Kim, says. He says, uh, systems and structures are not uh, systems. If the systems and structures don't work, then throw it out. Because systems and structures are there to keep us in the spontaneity and in the spirit, not keep us in robotics and duties and Christian dumb works and repetition and all that. Does that make sense? So there's a science, but there's an art. And in the next five days, I'm going to teach you about some of the sciences, the principles, the key uh, foundational things. Uh, safeguards, uh, truth, biblical truth, revelations for us to understand the science of the prophetic, but also the art, the raw, the Davidic tabernacle, the shepherd boy, the revival spirit anointing, just the rawness of hearing the voice of God and growing and the voice of God. Someone say art. Praise God. Shout that I give me some hearts and likes to the people of God. So I started growing in my journey of knowing God, hearing God. Is this you, God? And Lauren Cunningham, oh my gosh, the founder of YWAM. Lauren Cunningham. One of the greatest apostles of our time, but maybe not even that known by so many uh, more nominal or, you know, pew-sitting Christians. If you're a leader, then you know who Lauren Cunningham is. He's the founder of YWAM Youth as a Mission, the greatest missions organization on earth. But he has this book called, Is This Really You, God? Where he would begin to, you know, he would, he would hear God and have these experiences and encounters. And he would say, is this really you, God? And just these crazy, wild, radical testimonies. I'm telling you. Crazy, wild, radical testimonies. But as I grew, as I grew my hunger to want to know the Lord, I began to grow in my ability and my art to hear God's voice. And every season, you, you experience and discern God and hear God even differently. You know, when I was, uh, when, when I first started off, uh, my ability to hear God was, was in a sense, very difficult. But now, you know, 11 years later, being born again and moving into prophetic and, and being full-time in ministry, now, in a sense, I'm much more confident of, of God's voice and my ability that I'm discerning and hearing well and properly. Does that make sense? And that's the thing, people of God. Are you confident that you're hearing God's voice? Are you sure that you are hearing God's voice? And we're going to get into that. But simple steps. Some say simple steps. Simple steps to hearing God's voice. And again, today I'm talking about the posture of the prophet. Okay, Simple steps to hearing God's voice. The posture of the prophet. And I started off. Simply, like, God, do you want me to talk to the person? Yes or no? I started just asking simple questions. God, what do you want me to wear today? And it might sound simple and stupid, but it starts with simplicity. It starts with surrender. It starts with submitting our will and our decision-making to the Lord and surrendering and simply inviting Him in. And simply asking his thoughts, his opinions. I want to know your thoughts. I want to hear your words. I want to know your opinion. God, if you have a word that's higher than mine, if you have a thought that's greater than mine, if you have an opinion, I want to hear it. And I want to honor it above my own opinion. So I would simply start off and ask the Lord a simple question. What do you want me to wear today? What do you want me to do today? 
Simple. What do you want me to eat today? God, do you want me to wear this shirt? Do you want me to wear this shirt? And I will be led by the Spirit. Remember, a son only says what he hears his father say. So I will be led by the Spirit and I will train my ability to hear God's voice. Does that make sense? I would train my ability to discern the voice of God. And just simple steps. Don't say simple steps. And the reason why so many people get things wrong in the prophetic or maybe you're not hearing the voice of God for the greater measures, start small. Start simple. Every day. The little everyday things matter to God. Lord, do you want me to go here? Do you want me to go there? Lord, uh, do you want me to wear this? Do you want me to eat this? What are you saying to me today? What are you thinking about me today? What are you thinking about this person today? Shoot. When I used to activate people in the prophetic and my uh, discipling, I, I would ask them and say, what is God showing you about that person? Ask the Lord. What, do you show, what is God showing you about the person? And go for it. Go share with them. Take a risk. And these are simple steps of surrender. Simple steps of training your ability to hear the voice of God. So somebody repeat this with me. All right, Repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, I want to hear your voice. I want to know you. And I want to see your face. Someone say, Amen. The posture of the prophetic is simply seeking the heart of God. And desiring to know him. And to hear his voice. And when you obey in the simple things. When you obey in the small things. Remember. Radical obedience. Determines radical rewards. Simple obedience. Makes history. If we believe like a child. If we obey like a child. Will you see like a child? Will you love like a child? I want to be like a child. I want to breathe like a child. I want to hear your voice like a child. I want to hear your voice like a child. Someone say hallelujah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, John 10, 10. We're going to start going through some scriptures here. So that's my little introduction on how I started in the prophetic. I didn't even know there was something called the prophetic. I just wanted to know God. And hear him and hear his voice and be obedient. And as I began to do so, as I began to grow my relationship with God, people, I started moving into prophetic. I started hearing things from people. I started releasing edification words and things began to happen. <laughs> wow. Shut that up. This is a, a scripture everybody knows about. Are you with me today? Give me some hearts, likes, you share. Wow, my gosh. Wow. John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice. And I know them and they follow me. My sheep listen to my voice. And I know them and they follow me. My sheep listen. To my voice. In midst of all the distractions. Fake news, media. Problems, emotions. Heart pulls, pizza. In midst of all these things. My sheep. Know my voice. And they listen to me. And they follow me. Are you listening? You know. Uh, when a baby is born. Uh, 
when a baby is born, you see that uh, they began to look at their mom's and dad's face and they began to hear the frequency, the sound, the voice of their parents. And then as they grow older, even in the midst of a crowd, when the father says, uh, Janet, or when the mother says, Deborah, the child hears the voice of their parents loud and clear above everyone else's voice, above every other sound. And that's how we grow in the prophetic. We grow in the prophetic by understanding the voice of our father. Understanding the voice, understanding the volume, understanding the frequency, the love behind the voice. So we recognize the voice of our parents above everybody else. I guarantee you, if if your mother calls you, then you're, you're going to know that it's your mom, no matter what. Because there's a familiarity. There's a, the, a, there's a knowing, there's a connection from your past and your childhood that you were raised and trained up with. It does something to your soul, to your heart, whether it's good or bad. But then there's always this sense, this sensation of this connection. And that's what it means to grow into prophetic. And some of us, we need to be like a child again. We need to learn to hear the voice of our Father again. I pray over you right now that you would learn to hear the voice of your Father. And that you would listen. That's the key word. Ding, 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 ding. Listen. Because the more you listen to the voice of the Father, the more you'll be able to properly hear Him. Listen, a lot of people are not listening. So therefore, they are disheartening themselves. They're clogging their ears. And it's harder and harder to hear the true, still, small voice of the Lord. Today, I'm talking about the posture of the prophetic. Wow. Because sin, pride, greed, the flesh, unforgiveness gets in the way of your ability to truly hear the voice of your Father. But a clean heart is clean ears. When we have clean hearts, when we have clean hands, we can hear clearly the voice of the Father. I pray right now that our heart posture would always be pure. And again, that's why I'm starting off the five days with this. Day one today right now is the posture of the prophet. Our hearts must always be pure. Our hearts must always be in love. Our hearts must always be in forgiveness. Our hearts must always be in not self-seeking or self-promotion. Our hearts must always be in the place of service. Jesus. Where's your heart in this? Do you want to grow into prophetic because you want to be powerful? Because you want to be famous? Do you want to grow into prophetic because you want to be called and respected as a prophet? Do you know how many people I know? It's so sad. They use the prophetic for their own gain. They use the prophetic to constantly bash others and to make others look bad. They use the prophetic for their own selves, their own sake, their own glory. Rather than using it to serve people, rather than using it to bring glory to God, to actually be the pure, genuine mouthpiece of the Father, they use the prophetic to manipulate, to distort. They use the prophetic to use it for their own soulish, fleshly, carnal selves. My gosh, I'm going there. I'm going there. There is a right posture of the prophetic. Of the prophet people of God. I remember um, Dr. Ronnie Howard Brown sharing a story where uh, somebody, of course, he's from South Africa, Dr. Ronnie Howard Brown, he's from South Africa, and somebody in South Africa invited him to come and pray for him. And if he did, he would give Dr. Ronnie $1 million. And Dr. Ronnie refused it and said, I will not go. I'm not going to be bought by money. I'm not going to be bribed. I'm not going to be influenced or motivated by your bribery. We must keep our heart posture 
pure and clean. Someone say, I cannot be bought. Someone say, I am not a sellout. Somebody say, my heart posture before the Lord is pure in Jesus' name. Someone say, amen. John 10, 27. My sheep know my voice. They hear me. They listen to me. And as a child grows and knows the voice of their father and mother, I'm telling you, do you know the voice of your heavenly father? Are you with me today? Is this good? Yes or no? Give me some hearts likes here. I love this passage here. Um, wow. I love this passage here. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Wow. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 7. 1 Samuel 3, 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Because the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Verse 8. Once again, for the third time, the Lord called to Samuel. And Samuel in Hebrew is Shema. Well, Shema means to hear. So Samuel means the hearing of God or God hears. Shema El. El means God. Shema means to hear. God hears. Once again, for the third time, the Lord called to Samuel. He got up, went to Eli, and said, Here I am, Eli. Eli was the priest, was the spiritual father, his mentor. And God called the third time to Samuel. He got up and went to his spiritual father, Eli, and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli, the spiritual father, hear me now, realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. Go and lie down, he said to Samuel. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That's one of the greatest things you and I could ever do. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now, here's some key things here. Samuel, number one, had a mentor. Okay. If you want to grow in the prophetic or you want to grow in the art of hearing the voice of God, many times there is a role model. There is a mentor. There is a spiritual father, mother figure. There is someone. And listen, there may not be somebody around you in your life, but you ask for it. When I grew, when I started growing in my relationship with God as a Christian, I started seeking mentors. I started seeking leaders. I wanted to pull on them. I wanted to, you know, uh, pick their brain, you know, just ask them questions, not imposing, not acting like I know it all or I know everything. But I just wanted to ask and just draw from their well, draw from their spirit. And I pursued it. Samuel, a young boy, he had a mentor. Who are the mentors of the prophetic in your life? Who are some spiritual fathers and mothers <clears throat> in your life <clears throat> who have been moving in the prophetic and the office of a prophet, who have been moving, who, who have been... You know, who have had a certain relation with God that you desire? You know, who are those people in your life? Pray for it. Ask for it. Seek for it. Amen? And because that impartation will come over you, just like Elijah and Elisha. That impartation, that covering, that umbrella, that grace will come over you. So Samuel had a spiritual father, number one, Eli. Okay, and number two, Samuel thought his spiritual father was calling him. This is so good. I love this passage. Samuel thought Eli, his spiritual father, was calling him, but Eli realized it was God that was calling him. Why is this so important? Because Samuel thought that it was his spiritual father calling him, not God. Why is this important? Because many times the voice of God sounds like the voice of your parents. Many times the voice of God sounds like the voice of your father, mother, or somebody that is dear to your heart. Many times when I hear the voice of God, 
I actually hear the voice of my earthly father, Pastor Theodore Lev. I hear him speak. And there's, there's this sensation, this experience that I begin to have. Samuel thought it was Eli. Why? Do you think it was because... Do you think it was because God's voice sounded like Eli? No, there was a familiarity. There was a commonality. There was a commonality, a familiarity. There was, you know, shoo. God will many times speak to you in ways that you are familiar with, that you are gifted with. God will speak to you in ways that you're familiar and gifted with. And many times it's through the voices of your coverings. The voices of your elders, of your leaders. And I've said this many times. The reason why many people are in confusion on witchcraft. Is because they have too many spiritual fathers. They have too many spiritual mothers. You're listening to too many voices. You're listening to too many leaders. Stick with one man of God. Stick with one spiritual mother father. Stay in the light. Listen, that's why John the Baptist, they had disciples. And when they saw Jesus, they left John the Baptist and followed Jesus. It's one way or none at all. Stick to one path. Stick to one school, one sect, one group. Are you follow me here? Ah, shut that up. All right, number one. Samuel had a spiritual father, a role model. Let me ask you, who are your spiritual father's mothers? Who are your role models? Okay. And you can have more than one. Absolutely. But typically, there will be that one person that will truly walk with you for a greater length of time. Number two. <laughs> uh, many times the voice of God sounds like the voice of your own parents. And we need to trust in that. We need to trust in that. All right. Shut up, ba ba ba. And number three, Samuel said, "Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening." Come on, you better hear me now. The posture of the prophet is not about demanding. God, speak to me. God, here I am. It's not about being entitled. The posture of the prophet is yieldedness. It's availability. Are you actually yielded? Like, you know, when you're driving in a car and you're driving into the yield lane and on the floor it says yield, which means you wait, you tarry, you yield. You're, you're just, you know, you're not rushing in. You're not assuming. You're not imposing. You're not demanding. Listen to me when I'm talking to you. Listen, I'm here in the room. You better listen to me. No, no. You yield. You make yourself available. It's like a man and a woman where many times men, we just speak <laughs> or we don't speak. But then a woman, many times, you know, they like to be uh, pandered. They like to be caressed. Women like, to, you know, it's like, you know, uh, play with the hair and, you know, scratch your back and just, just woo, 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 sign. And then all of a sudden it just begins to open and unlock. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Are you available? Or are you distracted? Are you too busy? Set on your structures, on your systems, on your daily schedule. Or are you making yourself available? Are you yielded to the Lord? Samuel learned to yield himself to God. Are you following me here, people? Like God. Today I'm talking to you about the posture of the prophet. And I'm going to give some keys in a minute on the posture, the right posture of the prophet. And number two, and then secondly, after that, I'm going to give you some keys on how you know that you're hearing the voice of God. And we're going to close. Amen. This is day one, the posture of the prophet. First Samuel 3, 1. The boy Samuel ministered to the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There was not many visions. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Isn't that interesting? The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord. But the word of the Lord was rare. What does that mean? 
I, I keep ministering, but I'm not receiving back. I'm giving to the Lord, but I'm not hearing anything in return. And that's like many of you right now. But I declare that in the realm of abundance, that today in the fulfillment of the spirit of the prophecy of Joel chapter 2, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I pray that the spirit of God will be poured out like never before. So as they were ministering, the word of the Lord was rare. Isn't that interesting? There were not many visions, but God began to reveal himself to Samuel. I pray that God will begin to reveal himself to you. Where there's a rarity of the word of God. There's a rarity of experiencing God having relationships with God where there's a rarity, which means it cannot be found. It's rare. It's it's a rare item. It's a rare thing. It can, it's it's like wow. It's a miracle. I pray that the word of the Lord will be revealed to you. That He would love you so much that because He loves you so much that He chooses to reveal His divine word to you while it is rare and missing and absent to the rest of the world. I pray that he will give it to you. Reveal yourself. Show me your glory, God. So many people are still ministering. They're, they're giving, they're, but they're not hearing back the word of God. I pray that God will speak to you. Samuel, Samuel, Ivana, Arlene, Ben, I pray that you will hear the still small voice of God, the whisper of his heart. Someone say amen. Listen, I'm talking to you about the posture of the prophet. Praise the Lord. Let me give you, let me give you some keys here, all right? I want to give you five keys here. Praise the Lord. I want to give you five keys and I could give you so much more. And honestly, this needs to become a book and it will be, okay? I want to give you five keys, uh, to five keys to the posture of the prophet, all right? Number one, humility, all right? Prophets must be humble, all right? We need to be humble. We need to go low. We need to be people who seek his face. You, prophets don't know it all. Prophets are hungry, and we continue to seek God's face. We're hungry. We are humble, all right? Listen, the Bible says that he uh, detests the proud in heart. When you're proud, then your revelation begins to get skewed and your revelation begins to get uh, dirty, okay? It's tainted. But when you're hungry and humble, he draws near and you begin to receive pure revelation. Some say pure revelation. Some say, I want to receive pure revelation. Your humility attracts God. Humility attracts the Holy Spirit. So when you're humble, you're teachable. You know that you don't know it all, okay? But you're always wanting to learn. You're always wanting to grow, okay? You're not afraid to listen to other prophets. You're not afraid to sit in other people's meetings. It, you, you are secure enough to celebrate others. You, you are secure enough to know that there are other prophets and other prophetic people that are more mature, more accredited, and have a greater mantle than even you. That's not an insecure thing. That is very secure, but you're secure in yourself, and you thank God, and you celebrate for your unique relationship with Him. The first key to having the right posture of the prophet is humility. So let's say humility. The second key is accountability. All right, listen, a lot of people are not accountable, all right? A lot of prophets are still lone rangers. They don't listen to nobody, okay? They think they have it all. They think they are the most supreme prophet. They think they have the most supreme revelation. My revelation, the things God's showing me is greater than anything that God's showing you. I'm the mega prophet. I'm the major prophet. I'm the supreme numero uno pizza prophet. I'm the master prophet. Come on. That's bogus. That's pride. 
And we need to be people that are accountable. Listen, the higher you go, the more accountable you must be. That's why it says whenever you prophesy in the midst of a corporation, in the midst of a corporate crowd, uh, you know, let two or three be there to judge the word together. My gosh. And we need to be accountable to the words that we say. Meaning, uh, is it true? Uh, did I miss it? Uh, did, did it come to pass? Etc. And And we need to be accountable. We need to be in accountability. Your anointing goes higher when you are in accountability. Okay. Shut that da da. Amen. The third key to having the right posture of a prophet is having an unoffended heart. My gosh, an unoffended heart. Listen. <laughs> There are too many people that are offended. Too many prophets. You meet prophetic people and they say, oh, you know, sister so-and-so, brother, this and that. And they say, oh, you know, that church, those people, they're this or that. There are too many offended, bitter, grumpy prophets. Too many prophets are offended and bitter. So now their oil and their well and their flow is tainted. We need to be prophets that are unoffendable. Which means I keep my heart in purity. I keep my heart in check. My heart is filled with love. My heart is filled with grace. My ashaka. Whoosh. My heart is overflowing with compassion. Come on, people of God. And too many people are offended. You know, they're they're bitter. They're too busy criticizing and judging. You know those judging problems? And listen, I believe in the judgment of God. I do. And I believe that there are prophets who predominantly <clears throat> have a position to warn or to judge and correct. I correct all the time. There are prophets that many times are more severe on the correcting and the judging and the warnings, however. There are. But we must do it out of love. That's the true posture of the prophet. It's out of love. It's out of brokenness and weeping. It's out of brokenness. Not out of being offended. So now I'm going to bash everybody. I'm going to destroy and discipline. And I'm going to rebuke everybody. Because I'm offended. <laughs> Keep your heart free from offense. Prophets. The right posture of the prophet is to keep our hearts free from offense. Come on, somebody. Someone say amen. I declare right now that your heart is free of the spirit of offense. Come say amen. Shut that up. The fourth key to having the right posture of the prophet is love. Some say love. Listen, people of God. We need to love God more than our ministry. And I'm going to say it again. We need to love God more than our ministry. We need to love God more than the persecutions or the blessings that come with obe obeying God. We need to love God more than our platforms. We need to love God more than the praise of the man. We need to love God more than the ministry itself. Um... <clears throat> and we need to love. Pro the pure uh, posture of a prophet is to love, to love, to love, to love. Greater love is no one than this that he lays down his life for his friends. So a prophet is a servant. Okay. I prophesy to serve, not to serve my big head or my ego or to say, wow, I got all of it right or wow, you know, I was so spot on today. No, it's not about that. It's about Loving, and when you and I are in love, he reveals his secrets to us. When we are in love with God, he trusts us with the nuggets of gold, the nuggets of glory. He trusts us with the mysteries and revelations. Some say love. We as prophets need to love the world, not hate it. Okay, We need to love people, not hate people. We need to love all people. We as prophets need to have hearts of love. Hearts 
of love where where we continue to surf and give and bless no matter i know some people used you and hurt you but it's still love give bless come on somebody Shabababa. And lastly, the fifth key to having a right posture of the prophet, it is your integrity. Someone say integrity. What is integrity? It's being right before God. It's being honest with the Lord and honest with yourself. It's knowing that, you know, I don't get it right all the time. I don't, I'm not perfect. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I'm not perfect. And integrity is sticking to the values that God has given you. So that it keeps you in the line of integrity. So that nobody can fall. Even if people try to accuse you, it falls to the ground. Because you're a man of God. Because you're a woman of God. Because you uphold yourself to a level and to a stature. You carry yourself in a way that there is no, um, there is no, uh, what is that word? Uh, there is no appearance of evil. But you carry yourself in such a way of integrity. That it honors God and it honors the prophetic and it honors people and it honors you. Some say honor. Integrity is, is what keeps us in the right posture of the prophet. And now, in day one, which is the posture of the prophet, in this whole five day series of growing in the prophetic, I want to give you five ways that you know that it's God speaking to you okay and uh, this is going to be so good because I know many of you uh you know you're hungry for the Lord you want more of Jesus amen and you want to grow in the things of God and that's why you're on this broadcast right now on Facebook or on YouTube it's because you want to grow in the prophetic but how do you know that it's God and not you, not your flesh, not your pizza. How do you know that it's Jesus speaking to you? The Holy Spirit speaking to you. And not yourself. You're not making it up, right? You guys ready for this here? All right. Number one. You know that it's the voice of God. Because it is the word of God. Okay. The written word of God. All right. Now. There's a lot of people who only hear God's voice, but they don't know the word. That could go into witchcraft and uh, the occultic and confusion. The more you know God's written word, the more you will discern God's spoken word. The more you know God's written Torah, written word, how he has revealed himself and related himself with the people of God for the last 5,000 years. The more you understand that and the word of God, the more you know his spoken word. Remember, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, what did Jesus say? It is written. Jesus knew the word of God. Listen, even the devil knows the word of God. The devil knows the word of God better than you and I do. But it needs to align with his word. And it is not contrary to his word. It is not opposite to his word. It is true, it is aligned, it is parallel, it reflects the Word of God. The Word of God is like a chariot. And uh, the voice of God is like the writer. If there's a marriage there. So I'm saying that. So number one, the Word of God. How do I know this is God that's speaking to me? Number one, know the Word. Know the word, all right? Number two, you surrender. Someone say surrender, okay? Um, as you surrender and submit your will, then, and if it keeps coming back to you, it may just be God. You die to yourself. You die to your flesh. You die to the right of being right. 
and you surrender and say, God, I surrender. I don't know anything. Uh, you know, I'm your son. No, speak, Lord. I'm your servant. And you surrender. And as you surrender, and the true right thing will continue to come back. There's times when I'm praying or I'm ministering. And as I'm ministering, that thought keeps coming back to me. Or that name, that issue, that something just keeps coming. It doesn't leave me. I can't kick it. I can't, you know, it, it, it sticks with me. And I, but I keep surrendering it. That's how I know it's God. Because it stays, although I surrender it. So, second key. How do I know that this is God speaking? You live in a life of surrender. You keep surrendering. You keep giving it up. You keep giving it up. All right, number, number three. How do you know that this is the voice of God that's speaking? Number three. It makes you more like Jesus. All right, a prophetic word makes you more like Jesus. When you hear God speak to you, it makes you more patient, more kind, more gentle, more loving, more sacrificial, more humble. When you actually hear the voice, when you hear God speak to you, it it humbles you, it wrecks you, it doesn't puff you up like, like they may have the master prophet. You worship me today. No, no. Like, hearing the voice of God, it, it puts a fear in you. It puts a terror in you. My gosh. It makes you more like Christ. It makes you more humble, more caring, more kind, more gentle. Whew. I doubt you heard from God if you're actually acting like the devil. You're acting like a heathen, but you're claiming that you heard God. You're living in sin, but you're claiming that you have a relationship with God. Right. Okay. See you later, Felicia. Okay, Karen. Sayonara, buddy. Peace out. When you hear the word of the Lord, you become more like God. Remember, you become like what you listen to. Who are you listening to? Number four. Uh, confirmation and fruit. Okay. Is it bearing fruit? Okay. Listen. There's some bigger things in my life. You know, like confirmation and fruit. What does that mean? That means that uh, it's being confirmed by multiple people in your life. Or there's like a, a the hand... In a glove, it's a perfect fit. It's like the Cinderella foot in the shoe, the stiletto. Bam! It's like there's confirmation. It's just like you know there's a peace. There's a divine knowing. It's like, aha, you have a revelation moment. You're like, oh my gosh, I was made for this. It was like Eureka. It's like, whoa. And then there's fruit that begins to happen. Like there's real fruit. There's good fruit. Not bad fruit. Like there's good fruit. Like, man, it's opening up doors. It's blessing people. You know, people are blessed. There's miracles happening. Like, there's doors opening. You're moving forward in life. You're sticking closer to Jesus. You're loving God. Like, you know, how do you know it's God speaking to you? How do you know these manifestations you shake him? Well, are you loving God? Are you growing in the Lord? Is it is it opening doors? Is there fruit to it? Is there a fruit of holiness? Is there a fruit of righteousness <laughs> is there fruit some say amen fruit and you know sometimes fruit is you know having a heart for souls it's my gosh is there fruit in your charismatic meetings in your revival meetings is there fruit is something happening to you are you changing like man there's who some say i'm bearing fruit like Confirmation of fruit. My gosh. And the fifth. The fifth and the last. Key. To you knowing that it is God speaking to you. And not your voice, not your flesh. You know, you know, you know. That it's God speaking to you. It is. It glorifies. Jesus. 
It glorifies Jesus. It lifts up Jesus. Every true prophetic word from God brings glory and honor to Jesus, to God. It glorifies Him. It brings honor to Him. It, it makes you want to worship more. It makes you want to praise more. It makes you want to give yourself to the gospel more. It makes you love the Lord and it brings honor to His name. People begin to be in awe of God. People begin to love the Lord even more, worship God even more. People, wow, shut up, shut up. It glorifies Jesus. It honors Jesus. It honors Jesus. A word from God brings honor to God. It may be hard, it may be difficult to obey it. But it brings honor to Jesus. It brings honor to Jesus. The posture of the prophet must be pure, must be kind, must be loving, must be humble, must be teachable. The posture of the prophet must be subservient, must be a servant. Must be an accountability. Long for fathers and mothers, long to be a son, long to be a daughter, long to. Prophets and prophetic people bring glory to Jesus. Ultimately, if your prophetic ministry, if your. If your ministry isn't bringing glory to Jesus, then what is? Wow. Blessings to you, people of God. This is day one of this five part series of Grow in the Prophetic. I want you to comment below. What did you learn? What spoke to you? What ministered to you? What, as we're growing, as you, I, as we are growing to learn the art and the science of hearing God's voice? As we are learning the posture, the right posture of a prophet. Is this really you, God? Am I crazy? Am I losing my mind? Is this you? Are you speaking to me, Lord? Jesus. Jesus. I want you to comment below what spoke to you. What did you learn? What did you receive on day one, part one of Grow in the Prophetic? I'll tell you this. I'm so wrought. I'm so wrought. Everything is about knowing God, being in relationship with God. It's not even about the prophetic. It's just about a people.